Um, this is an introduction to alternative augmentative communication and uh, she'll cover what is an AAC, what is the goal of an AAC, who uses AACs, and what types of AACs are available, and where does the funding come from for AAC devices. And uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, Jill will now introduce herself and uh, start the training. Hi. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of an introduction using a Dynarite. Hi, my name is Jill and Ruth, and I am a speech and language pathologist. I am the speech and language pathologist at Edith Cohen Laboratory School on Utah State University's campus. I am also a clinical instructor and supervisor for USU Department of Communicative Disorders and Deaf Education. I have been in special education and speech and language pathology for 20 years. I am happy to be here today to talk to you about augmentative and alternative communication. Okay, and I am happy to be here today to talk to you about um, AAC. Um, I always like to start off giving just a little example of um, some uh, alternative and, and augmentative communication device, and that was the Dynarite. Um, today I am going to be just giving you an introduction to augmentative and alternative communication. Um, as you heard from the device, I am a certified speech language pathologist um, at Edith Bowen Elementary School. Um, that is this laboratory school that's on campus. I'm also a clinical supervisor at Utah State. Um, I also teach the assistive technology class um, here at Utah State as well. Um, to start off, I want to play a video clip for you. Um, this is a little girl that I work with, and um, we will start off with this video clip. When Shawnee was like 18 months old, we were finding that Shawnee probably wasn't going to start speaking and we were going to need some kind of technology to help us. And it was very emotional because her brain was so smart and her body just couldn't get it out. I work with Shawnee Christensen. She has a form of muscular dystrophy which makes her muscles weak, especially the ones that she uses for speech. So she has an electronic communication device which allows her to uh, say the things that she wants to. It has speech output. Let them, hold, let them be anything that they can dream. Hold them up higher, build that fire that makes them believe. She's doing wonderfully in school. She, you know, she's reading, learning, interacting with the teacher, and all of that improvement is a result of being able to communicate in her classroom, which is what she's learning and experiencing working with comedy. I think there's nothing in life more important than communication. I think most people would agree with that. And I think what's wonderful about this department, that whether we're talking about audiology or deaf education or speech language pathology, our focus is on helping people to develop better communication skills. And that changes lives. Give them hope, let them be anything that they can dream. Hold them up higher, build that fire that makes them believe. I have a course in Augmentative Communication and also an interdisciplinary training program in Assistive Technology, which is a little more general and looks at uh, technology related to mobility needs, communication needs, visual impairments, hearing impairments. So students get a variety of experiences. They meet people from the community who have different disabilities and they actually work in the assistive technology fabrication lab. This class is uh, assistive technology. It's where we work on projects for people who have disabilities to, to give them assistance in, in whatever way they need it. We have all the power tools, all of the measuring devices, all of the materials that we need to build whatever we decide we want to build. This is an adjustable slant board for a little girl we made who has muscular dystrophy. And um, we just made it so, just depending on what activity she's doing, 
it will adjust. If she's reading a book, it will just sit nicely on there and she's still able to turn the pages. There is a wide range of projects that we do. Uh, it's just a matter of what the needs of the community are. We can now train our students because we have enough facilities to, both in speech language and audiology as well as deaf ed, be able to provide our students the kind of training they need and hands-on experience they need that we could not provide before. And so it really makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference in the lives of faculty, students, and the patrons we see here and the future lives of people when they go out in the field. Let them be anything that they can dream. Hold them up higher, build that fire that makes them believe. And if your mouth can't speak, your eyes don't see the colors of the rainbow And if your hands get weak I will lift you up and take you where I know you can go helping poor disabled people, it's not that kind of an attitude, rather you're empowering people to be more successful in life. I feel very strongly that she's going to go where she wants to life because she's been given the opportunity to. That communication is such a huge thing. Um, physical impairments can be overcome, but if you, if you can't communicate with the people who are around you, there's no way that you can succeed or go where you need to go, and, and they've given her that opportunity. There's a brand new day that's breaking. There's a hope in all I'm Thank you for helping me and my teachers. That is one of my favorite clips. Um, I like to show that at the beginning of every demonstration I, d I do like this. At the end of this presentation, we will see that little girl. She was in kindergarten in that clip, um, and we will see her um, at the end of third grade. And you'll see how her, how her um, AAC device helps her. Um, let's just talk about some facts first. Um, there are about 3.5 million Americans who have such significant communication delays that they can't rely on their natural speech um, to meet their daily needs. And without access to speech, these individuals um, are really restricted in all aspects of their life, whether it be education, employment, family, or community. And I would like you just to think for a minute. If we were all here together, I would have you all stand up and try to get to know each other. Um, not using your speech. But since we are in different places, I just want you to think about this. Think about the place where you spend the most time. With whom do you communicate throughout the day? How do you communicate? And how would you communicate if you were not able to do so verbally? If you, for some reason, lost your, your speech, your ability to communicate verbally, how would you communicate? And would it change your life? Now I have to say for all of us, the answer would be absolutely yes. Um, if you know someone who's had a stroke, who has had the power to communicate for years and then lost that, you know what a devastating, um, life-changing thing this is for them. So communication is so important as it was stated in the clip. Um, I just wanted to talk about the things, the types of ways we use communication and language. Um, communication and language skills allow a person to start a topic or a conversation with someone, maintain it, terminate it when you would like to. Um, think about how you use um, communication in your everyday lives with your interpersonal, interpersonal relationships with your spouse, with your children, with your coworkers, and just any interpersonal relationships you have, the power of communication really plays a big part in that relationship. 
Your communication also allows you to share ideas, express your feelings, give information, ask questions, describe events, solve problems, direct others, which is a favorite of mine. You could ask my family and they would agree. Um, entertain, show your imagination, refuse, learn, and function with greater independence. Just think about what it would be like if you lost your ability to do all of those things verbally. And Daniel Webster gave some nice perspective on this. He said, if all my possessions were taken from me, with one exception, I would choose to keep the power of communication, for by it, I would soon regain all the rest. And I really like that quote. It does give you some perspective. If you have your communication, you could gain a lot of things back that you had lost. So here we get into kind of the meat of the presentation today. What is AAC? And when I say AAC, that's just the acronym for Augmentative and Alternative Communication. It's just easier to say. Um, so according to ASHA, AAC involves attempts to study and when necessary, compensate for temporary or permanent impairments, activity limitations, and participation restrictions of persons with severe disorders of speech language production and or comprehension, including spoken and written modes of communication. Um, people who use an AAC device um, are people who do not speak or people who are really difficult to understand or have language retrieval issues. They are used by people of all ages with a variety of disabilities and we'll go over some of those. Um, a person can send a message through printed word, speech or voice output, pictures or any combination of these things. And as we get going, we, I will show you a lot of different, I brought a lot of different devices here that we are going to show you from low tech to high tech and we'll go through those. And you can think of um, <clears throat> people who you are working with um, who might match one of these devices. Um, as far as AAC goes, um, people who use it, there are no um, boundaries. All socioeconomic groups, ethnic groups, racial backgrounds, people of all ages use AAC. Um, right now in my practice, I'm using AAC with um, students who are in preschool and I'm also using them with um, people who are in their 60s. So AAC is, um, can be used by any person of any age. Um, the unifying characteristic is that for some reason they require some assistance for speaking um, due to whatever, um, whether it's permanent or temporary, but they need some extra help in meeting all of their communication needs. Um, some of the people that you might, um, that might use assistive technology, um, AAC in particular, are people with um, an in intellectual disability. Um, people with cerebral palsy, autism, apraxia of speech, traumatic brain injury, um, any acquired physical disability such as multiple sclerosis, um, Parkinson's disease, ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease, or people who um, have aphasia due to a stroke. Now, when we're talking about the goal of AAC intervention, I think sometimes we um, start looking for a device only. But really, what we're, it's not to find just a device for the person to use, but it's to find something that they can use to help them efficiently and effectively engage in whatever activities that they choose. And I think that's important to remember. It's not just the device, although it is important to find a good match between a person and a device. It is also important to remember that it's to enable them to be able to communicate effectively with, with whom they want and where they want. So 
So again, just remember the message, not the medium, is what matters for people who cannot use their own voices. And I really want you to think about that today. I know I sometimes get into the, um, I get into what device could we use, what device could we use, instead of what does the person need the device for, what communication do they want to, um, what are they trying to communicate, who are they communicating with, what can we find for them that fits that. So I think that's really important. Um, so let's start talking a little bit about different devices. Um, devices come in lots of different sizes, shapes, colors. Um, today we'll be talking about quite a few devices. These are the ones that I just had immediate access to and just know that I will show you some and there are many, many more um, that you can find. Um, if you get on the internet, you can um, research and find many more devices that I'm going to show you to today. These are the ones that I am the most familiar with um, and the ones that I do have access to. Um, when we talk about devices, sometimes we think about just a high-tech device. But do know that there are different devices to help um, people communicate. Different, some of them require, we call them no-tech systems. Um, doesn't require a power source, something really easy and simple. And sometimes the simplest, um, the simplest thing is the best thing. It doesn't cost money usually or it's very inexpensive. The upkeep is easy. Um, it doesn't cost a lot to fix it, which you will find on some of these high-end devices that, we'll, that we will look at today. Um, a low-tech system requires a source of power, but it's really easy to program. Um, it might be like a battery or something like that. Still really easy. Um, affordable, which is a big thing for um, parents or teachers or someone looking for a device. Um, and we will talk about the expense of some of these devices. But sometimes your know and low tech systems can work really, really well. And they don't cost a lot of money. Um, a mid tech system requires a power source, requires some level of training to be able to program it and maintain it. And then a high tech system requires a power source, extensive training um, to program and maintain it. And you'll find the higher tech you get, usually the more expensive it is. But if that is what works for your client, then you may really want to think about spending the money to get that. Um, let's start off with some no or low tech devices. I kind of um, put these together in a group and I'm just going to I'm going to have to step out of the picture here and there to grab some devices and some different things. So, um, the first thing that I want to talk about is a PEX book. And I don't know if you guys have, most of you have seen this. I will put this on here. A PEX book is just a book. Um, you can tell I use this book with young kids because I've got Fruit Loops and crackers. The basic premise of a PEX system, and PEX stands for Pic Picture Exchange Communication System. So in essence, what happens is the, the child, usually it's, well, it's not always children we use this for, but the person who's using this exchanges a card do I need to have it down here or can I pick it up here? Is either one okay? Okay. They exchange the card that they've gotten from their book with a communication partner to receive what it is that they would like. Um, I have some examples you can see on the PowerPoint. Um, there's a couple of examples of books that you can look at. Um, PEX is a really good low-tech way I think especially for, for clients, children or adults who are just learning um, to initiate conversation. Um, I use this a lot um, in my practice. So a really nice low-tech solution. Um, 
as you can see on the, on the PowerPoint, there are also communication wallets. And I have used these before with um, students who are out on a, like on a job site and they can't carry around something big. They just have something in their wallet. And if, for example, if they're in a store or something and someone asks them a question, they can open their wallet. And we have provided like responses that they can um, use for questions that someone in the store might ask them. Also, it can just have pic pictures, um, just a smaller way of using um, a picture communication system instead of having to carry a big book. Um, this is just a step-by-step -step with levels, it's called. Um, for really simple communication, I'll turn this on. This has, this one in particular, I'll put it up like this, um, has three different levels, so you can program um, three different things on it. And let, I'll just show you um, what some of the things that this can do. Where are you? I can't find you. And this is an, exa an example. Um, if you're playing hide and seek with your child and he's trying to find you, he can press the button. Where are you? I can't find you. Very, very easy to program, and I'll show you how to do that. It has another level, if you guys can see that. We'll go to level two. students in schools um, who need help like um, with social skills, greeting people, and we might attach this to a wheelchair. And as they're walking through the school, they can press it. Hi. How's it going? And so they can say hi in different ways to people. And one of the things that I really like about this is you can have um, students help you program these devices. So it has a child's voice on it. Um, this has worked really well. Um, I particularly use this one with a little girl, very friendly, very much wanted to communicate with the kids in the hall, but couldn't. Um, so we programmed this for her, different ways to say hello. So that one was kind of fun. But that is the the step-by-step -step with levels. Really simple device um, and not very expensive for simple communication needs. This one is called the talk table. And I just picked this up in our lab the other day. Um, You press this one. Books, 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 please. I lost the picture to this one. I'm sorry about that. Food, food, food. Eat, please. So again, a very simple um, device for communication to be used by really anyone with simple communication needs. Lock, 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 please. Oops, sorry about that. Um, does anybody have any questions about kind of the no or low tech devices? And again, there are many, many different kinds out there. I'm just showing you a few. Does anyone have questions? Okay, we will just keep going then. But please feel free to ask questions as we're going. Oh, I taught you about the pictures change communication system. Okay, now let's go to some kind of mid-tech devices. These usually run um, in the hundreds of dollars. Um, so they're still a pretty good value for what you get. Um, let me show you the ones that I've got here. Jill? Yes. Just really quick, I wanted to remind everybody that if uh, you 
don't know how to ask questions, click on the box that is in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, and uh, then you'll be able to ask questions. You'll fill, fill out three fields. The one of the field, well, the three fields are they ask for your name, your email address, and also how many or what your problem is or how you can be helped. In that field, just list how many people are participating at your computer. Thanks. Okay, so this one is called a communication builder. I call it a seven level communicator. And let me show you why. Let's make sure I can, let me turn it this way. On the back here, you can see it's called a seven level communicator because it has seven different levels and you switch the levels like that. Um, also on this one, here's how you turn it on and record. This one, this particular device can be re really easily adapted. Right now, it has eight different fields that someone can choose from, but for more of a beginning communicator, you could take this out. Oh, sorry about that. And you could just have one button, and anywhere the person touches within this area will say whatever it is that you programmed it to say. Then um, that can be moved up to two choices as they get better at communicating. And your, of course, your pictures would change with that. Then it has um, an overlay with four. And the one that I've chosen today is eight. And then it also has, I will put this device under, this is one that has 16 different choices. So I like this device because it can easily be adapted for the very beginning communicator. Um, and then it can kind of grow with the client as their language skills grow. Um, and again, these are easy to program. They just run by batteries. And again, I grabbed this device. I just left what um, whoever was using it last. Cow. Moo. Oh, that one didn't work. Sorry. Mostly with children, though. Okay. And when they get a little bit better using that um, communication builder, and they're ready for more um, words, and they need access to more words, um, you can use something like this. This is called a 32 message communicator. Again, everything you need is on the back. You just turn it on. Very easy to record. You turn it on and here's the volume. It has the different levels. I forgot to tell you about that on the last device. But for the different levels, like this is level one. I want. And then you can take these overlays out, put in a different overlay change the setting to level to the next level to level 2 and you have access to 32 more words so i'm not very good at math but basically you have seven levels times 32 words whatever that turns out to be um, one of the drawbacks with this is that um, either the client has to be able to remove these or um, someone has to do that for them. So that may take away a little bit of the independence. So, and again, you just program it. I want next. Please. So there you go. 
and you can program it to say anything you want. It's very easy to program. Um, I use, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the program that I use, Board Maker, to make all of these pictures. Um, and if you use the Board Maker program, you can take pictures of your family, um, the person's family, objects in their environment that they might want to use. And instead of using pictures such as these, you can use pictures um, that are immediately in their environment. So that's one way that you can make this a little bit more personal for them. Okay, and I think that's all of the mid-tech um, devices that I brought with me. Again, if you're interested in something like this, um, you can research on the internet and find a lot of different things. Now let's go to high-tech devices. Um, high-tech devices usually are in the thousands of dollars. They're expensive. They're, they take a lot to program and maintain. Um, that's some of the drawbacks, but some of the there are some really great aspects of high-tech devices, too. Um, you're usually going to use a high-tech device with someone who um, needs access to a lot of vocabulary. Um, and we'll look at some of these devices as we go. Um, one of the companies that I work a lot with um, and that I'm very familiar with is the Dynavox company. And I would like to show you some of the devices that they um, have. And I wish you guys were here so that you could play with these devices. I usually give participants lots of time to play with the device. Now it looks like there's a little bit of a glare. Is there anything we can do about that glare? Or maybe they can, they can probably see, okay. Um, No, this is okay. Okay, we're okay. Um, again, this device is most typically used for someone who needs access to a lot of vocabulary. And they need access quickly. And they don't want to be pulling sheets in and out of one of those mid-tech devices. Or maybe they don't have the they don't they aren't able to because of motor problems so this is a really good um, option for some people as you can see this is like a computer these run about eight thousand dollars so again very very expensive um, but you can generate a novel utterance using this device which for some people is very very important so if I wanted to say I wear and then a pop-up comes up, and let's say hat. I wear hat. I wear hat. There are different voices on this one also. There are adult voices and child voices, um, so depending on who is using the device. Anytime you see a, a folder, it's just like a folder that we would put um, you know, in our filing cabinet, and that folder will contain more things. If it doesn't have a little tab up at the top, it will just um, say that one word. But for example, if I go to family, then it gives us a pop-up menu of different family members. And again, you can download um, digital pictures from your camera um, and put those on here to individualize it for the client that you are working with. So let's see if we can um, make up a sentence here. I, I was looking for want and I'm not quite sure where, the, where that is. Mommy. I'm mommy. But I would need to find the word want to make that a good sentence. Um, so again, generating novel utterances. This is what the little girl on the clip that you saw uses. Hers is an older one. We are in the process of getting her a new one. But this is what she uses. And she can 
use it to say anything she wants to say. She has access not only to what um, you decide needs to be on there, but you have to program it. But it is not like a device such as this where you get what you get. Whatever is on this one, that's all there is. On this device, you are able to, once you learn it well, you can really say anything you want to say. It also has um, a keyboard that you can use. If there's a word that you can't find, you can type that word in. Um, and this is a device that can be used for all different ages. If we go here, you can see, um, you can start out with 12 buttons for a child. And you could do 12 buttons for an adult as well. This just happens to be the child. Um, you can go into nursery rhymes, and it's got some nursery rhymes Humpty in Dumpty there. Humpty Dumpty on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. So, and a lot of this comes pre-programmed on here, and then you can change it. Um, I like to use this with students in classrooms and whatever they're studying in their class. I can make a folder and have the vocabulary for that um, right in their device so that as they are having conversations in their classroom, they can be part of that. They can answer questions. They can ask questions. They can use this to um, say the Pledge of Allegiance or whatever we decide um, would work for them. Now, if we go back here, we're back to this menu. And you can see they have, this is for kids who are just learning language, um, language disordered. So it has a child, a teen, an adult with 20 buttons, an adult with 30 buttons. Let's go to the adult with 30 buttons. And you can see that this one is a little bit different. It has more buttons. So your motor skills are going to have to be a little bit better to do this one. Um, a lot of the same words, if you go into hygiene, you know, here's the different things that um, an adult might need as far as hygiene goes. And these come pre-programmed in, but then you can change those as you learn to program the device to where you can get anything you want in here. Um, it has different places if they want to tell you where they want to go. Oops, we'll close the pop-up. So you can see a person who has a device like this has access to a lot of language. Now this does take time and energy to program and to learn. It's not something you're going to give to a person and they're going to do well with it right away. Um, I had a gentleman come in the other day and he had a stroke 13 years ago and they gave him a device and just said, well here you go, here's your device. It was eight, about $8,000. And, but no one ever showed him how to use it. And so he never did use it. So he was without communication. He has been without communication for the last 13 years. We are in the process of helping him um, get another device. And he will be working with us up at um, our speech and language center on campus. So we can teach him how. So. This isn't a device that you just give to someone and expect them to use it. A lot of training needs to happen. And programming, and that, that's important to note. This is the same device, but I, this is um, something new that Dynavox has come out with. For those of you who um, have in mind maybe an adult who has had a stroke. Um, these are, this is something new, and they're called visual scenes. And instead of just having individual words, you can go into, um, let's say, my home and family. And let's say he wants to talk about something inside his house or her house. And let's say we want to talk about something in the kitchen so these pictures, and you can take pictures of their actual kitchen, their actual bedroom, their actual living room, so that it makes sense to them and is a little bit more concrete. So let's say that we wanted to say something 
we knew it had something to do with the kitchen. We would go into kitchen. And then wherever you press, um, like the fri you press the refrigerator, and this pop-up comes up. It's in the refrigerator. I can't reach it right there. Not that one. Can you find it? Um, and again, you could program this. This is what it comes with, but you could program this to say what you wanted it to say. If you press the sink, um, it says put it in the sink. I need some. Wash it, please. It can go in the dishwasher or is this clean? So depending on what your family uses, mine would probably say load the dishwasher now or something. But um, if you press the, the stove, um, you have help please, the stove, what are you making? A little longer, it's done. But very concrete um, for a person um, such as a person who has aphasia. Let's go back to the main page. Um, this device also, it's kind of a, it has a lot of bells and whistles on it. You can use it um, for a phone. Oh, and here are just some talks, a yes, a no, a okay, and O. Oh. Um, it can help you run your computer. It can be um, like your remote. So this is kind of a something that can be used for everything. You can turn the TV on and off with this. Um, you can have different channels that are preset, so it acts as a remote. And then this one, you can see it has the tab, and so when you press that, um, then it comes up with some things about movies or TV. What's on? Are there any good movies on? I hate this show. I'm done watching. And with these voices, again, they have different voices. You can make the speed um, faster or slower, louder or softer. It, for the price, it better do stuff like that. Um, let's see. So things I like to do, they can go into eating out. And let's say they go to a fast food restaurant and they want to order. Again, it kind of gives a visual scene. And you could take a picture of their favorite restaurant. If you press on to the go. bag. To go. To go. For here. For here. The one in the bag is to go. The one on the tray is for here. And then they can press. If, they, if you saw that, I pressed the ham. Oh, you can't really see that one. It's a hamburger. I'll do this one over here. And this can let a person independently order at a fast food restaurant. The cheeseburger, french fries. And of course, let me find my favorite. Diet, cook. There we go. So it gives a person some independence. They can go into a restaurant, order their own meal using their device. Um, Things I like to do. Let's go into shopping at the grocery store. You press the basket. You know. We need that. We need that. There we go. Has a shopping list. So you can put in there the foods that you typically buy. Um, so if you need help finding something. Or if someone is with a spouse or, or, or a parent, they can ask for something that they would like at the store. So I really like... Um, this addition that they've added to the Dynavox. I think it's very, very useful. It makes things more concrete for um, the user. Okay. Let me show you. Well, there's more devices by Dynavox. One that I really like that they've come up with lately. Um, it's like the Dynavox V that I just showed you, but you can use your eyes to choose what um, field that you want. As you, as you, I hope I can explain this correctly. Um, it uses something to follow the, your eyes, and when you come to the, the little button that you want, you hold your eyes on that button, and it selects it for you just using your eyes. 
very good for um, people who have something like um, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease who don't have any motor except for their eye movement. Um, a gentleman by where we live um, is looking at one of these. It's really exciting um, for people who have a disease such as ALS for them to be able to know that they are going to be able to communicate and they can do that by using eye contact. It's very hard. I've tried it before and it would take practice, um, but I think that's a really great thing. Um, Print Key Romic also has um, a device that you can just use your eyes um, for your selection tool. Um, there is a device called the Erica, and I'm sorry, I'm not sure what that stands for, but another device that uses just your eyes to be able to select the words or the letters that you, um, that you want to. Okay, another device that we, that I showed you early, earlier is called a Diner Right. And on this one, let's see, we'll clear it. And you can't really see what I'm typing very well, but you just type in the message, whatever you want to say. Um, you press the speak button and it will just say whatever you typed in. So let's write. This is the Dynarite. This is the Dynarite. So anything you um, type in, it will say for you. Really easy. You do have to have the motor skills to be able to type. You do need to be able to spell. Um, this requires quite high functioning. Um, but a really good alternative for someone who has those skills. Now, again, I'm just giving you companies, and these aren't the only companies. These are just some of the devices that we have access to. Um, this is a print keromic device called the Vanguard. This one uses um, a different um, picture system that I don't really know that well. Um, from what I understand, um, one of the supervisors that works with me is a print um representative. And he says, once you learn this system, it's very, very easy. But again, the premise is the same. It, this has a key guard on it. So if someone is shaking, they have a better chance of hitting the item that they want because they have this key guard that helps them get to the right button. Um, like this happy face up here, talks about happy. And then it gives you, um, when you press that, I think it gives you different feeling words, I think. Like I said, I don't know this one as well, but from what I understand, it is a good device and um, works well for people, for some people. So I wanted to be sure to bring um, that to your attention as well. And I digress a little here. This is um, a higher end device, a high tech device, again by Dynavox. But as you can see, the size, I mean, you can see how it is sitting in my hand. It's very light. I think it weighs approximately a pound. Um, it does the same kind of thing that the bigger Dynavox does, just in a smaller fashion. Again, you're going to have to have some good motor control to be able to press the buttons. It's a direct select with the finger, again. So. I need to explain. And it has a built-in speaker right here, so the, the sound is actually really good on this device. You can see that built-in speaker. Some people don't like this because it is a little bit bigger. I'm finding that um, the more people I work with, um, they're used to something the size of a cell phone. And so if, if you give them a big device, it's really, really hard for them. And so I'm finding a lot of um, adult clients looking at something the size of this and seeing if they can't make that work for them because they like the portability 
of a device like this. And again, this has all of the things on it that I showed you on the other Dynavox devices. Um, direct select, it has the same kind of tabs up here. Let me move that over a little bit. There we go. Now the glare is off of it a little bit. Um, yeah. No. What? Wait. And then you can just change this to make it um, individualized for your user. But I am finding that this one is something that I'm looking at a lot more with adult clients um, just because of the size. And some people can't, will not be able to use this because it is too small. But again, another option. And what you're doing, remember it's not the device necessarily, but the message. And one thing that I found important, I had a gentleman in the other day and I was trying to have him look seriously at one of the bigger devices and he just said no. No, he let me know like this. Too big, it was too big for him. When I brought this one out, he liked this one much better. And so we are looking into something like that for him because he did not want the, he liked this size better. Now this is called a Tango. Um, and let's see if I can get this one to work. Sometimes it has to be plugged in. We use these a lot, so they're well used. There it goes. And you can see again, this one, it weighs, it's kind of heavy, but it's easy to hold on to. Kind of a cool shape. Um, I have a harder time with this device because I don't know it very well, but I'm sure for some people it would be a fantastic option. Um, if you can see, I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me go back. And see, you can see how I get lost in this one. It says talk topics, photo albums, stories, lists, recent items, and take a picture. And you can use this. You can just pick it up and take a picture of the person or the item that you want and put it right into the device, which is really a nice feature. But let's go to topic talks. And you have family talk, morning, dressing, mealtime, homework, bedtime. Um, let's go into bedtime. And then we went to do it. I want to go to bed. Oh, now I don't know too many kids who would say that. This is more likely what they would say. And I hope you can hear that voice. I really do like the voice of this device. Very realistic. Um, I really like that voice. I want to do one more thing before I go to bed. And as parents, we might want to take that one off. But we wouldn't. And you navigate through it by using these arrows. That will take you up to the thing you were at before. Or you can, so you can go up and down with this arrow and you can go back and forth with this one. I hope that makes sense. So we have more bedtime words. We have bed nouns, sleeping nouns, sleep verbs, tired modifiers. Let's see what those, oh. Tired. I'm tired. If they're really tired. Exhausted. So again, I'm not as familiar with this one as I am the other devices. Um, but again, a, a different option. And that's what you need to keep in mind when you are working with clients who need AAC is what will work the best for your client. And it may be one that you're not familiar with, but you'll have to get familiar with it. And, and if there's parents out there, just know that there are many, many options for you when it comes to communication devices. Um, it looks like we are about done. I think I've showed, shown you about every device that I wanted to. Um, I would like to end 
oh, there's a Cyrano. I really like this Cyrano, and we don't have time to go into that today, but you might want to um, look at that. It is about as big as a cell phone. Very simple. It costs about $1,500, so it is a little bit more accessible um, financially. Um, we are ordering that for a gentleman here. Um, really quite simple. It does not come with a lot loaded on it. That's why the price is a little bit less. It has the camera directly um, on the device, so you just um, take the picture and then you can download it right into the device and label it right there. So I really like the Cyrano as well. We did the Tango. Oh, funding sources. Okay. Um, because this is important because a lot of times the devices are expensive. Um, parents or clients can always private pay for the device if they choose to do so. Um, if your child is in the school and the device is necessary for your student to access the general curriculum and to be able to communicate in the school, the schools do need to provide those um, for your student. There is an assistive technology team, there should be one in each district, and they can come do an assessment. And usually we try to go through insurance first, um, because then it belongs to the client or the patron. Um, so the next one on the line, as you can see, is private insurance. Um, and I do like trying to go with insurance because that device is, then belongs to them. And if you can pr prove that it's medically necessary, insurances will often pick up the tab for these devices. Um, there are um, different parties such as Easter Seals, um, the Lions Club, the Kiwanis Club, who a lot of times are looking for a good cause and sometimes they will um, fund a device for someone. Associations like the Muscular Dystrophy Association are good places to look. Um, TRICARE, and I didn't know about this, until lately, but it's an insurance program for active duty and retired military personnel. So that's a possible um, funding source. And then <clears throat> vocational rehabilitation has been a great funding source um, in the past. So those are kind of your options. Um, it's hard for a family to have to pay for one of these high end um, devices though. So. Usually each company, like if you're working with Dynavox, they will try to help you get funding. They have a funding department and they will help you. Um, we talked about AAC isn't, isn't magic. It takes practice to be able to use it. We won't go into that one a lot. Um, and then just to end, I would like to show you this last clip. This is the same little girl that you saw in the first clip. She is now in fourth grade. This video was taken last year when she was trying out for student body office, and so I would like to show you that to end with. My name is Shawnee Christensen and, and I am running for the Office of Healthy Lifestyle Commissioner in Training. I am a good example of being healthy. I try to have good manners. I eat really good things. I have lots of good ideas to help Chef Heather make lunch fun and exciting. We could give prizes or awards to the quietest classes in the lunchroom. Every once in a while I think it would be fun to have a special table with a different food on it so we could try something new. I think it is a healthy choice to recycle in the lunchroom. I think it would be great to let everyone in the school turn in their favorite food jokes every week and we could pick the joke of the week on Fridays.
Here is one to get you thinking. What happens when you do an egg a jerk? Ask me when you see me today and I'll tell you the answer. Until then, bye bye cutie pie. Look for me. And just as a little end note, she did win the office of Healthy Lifestyles Commissioner at her school, which she probably would not have been able to do had she not had her AAC device. Um, are there any questions before we sign off? I know we're a little bit over. Okay, thank you for participating. <laughs>